So welcome back to the Complete iOS Developer Course. This chapter is going to be a little bit different from the others because we're going to be developing a game. Now mostly this course is about apps but I wanted to show you how to make at least a fairly basic game because it's not that hard and it's a lot of fun and some of you might want to develop games later on down the line. So as always we'll dive straight in and we'll create a new Xcode project selecting this time game. And what I'm going to be making is a clone of a pretty famous game called Flappy Bird which you may have heard of. If you haven't heard of it then Google it. It's an exciting little story in itself. It's not available anymore but it was a, a big smash when it, when it was first released. But it also caused a bit of controversy. So we're going to want Swift. Now the game technology we're going to use is SpriteKit. There's a few other options there but SpriteKit is Apple's main game creation framework so it's definitely a good place to begin if you want to be developing games on iOS and we'll pick a universal device and click next and create okay in this video then I'm just going to give you a basic tour of what we've got you can see we've got a few different files to, to what we're used to and the kind of demo setup that we've we've been given so first of all, let's have a quick look at the main storyboard. We can see that we've just got a single game view controller here. So with SpriteKit, you normally work with scenes rather than view controllers. So you'll just have a single view controller and then you'll create different scenes within that view controller. So if we have a look at the view controller Swift file, we've got a few bits and pieces that we don't need to worry about here but the main one I'm going to show you is in the view did load method essentially what's happening is it's choosing a scene that is the game scene which is this one here the only one we've got at the moment and it's configuring the view so setting everything up for us and then activating that scene so that's what the game view controller is doing amongst other things in the game scene itself we've got a new label which is just hello world and there's a font there and then it's choosing the font size and giving the location which you can see here is in the middle of the frame so basically in the center of the screen and then it's adding that to the view and then we've got a little method here that's called whenever the user touches the screen and what that does is it establishes the location where the user tapped on the screen and it creates a new sprite which here we use SK sprite node. We're going to talk a lot about nodes later on but we don't really need to worry about it too much now. So it creates a new sprite using an image called spaceship and sets the scale and the position to be where the user touched it and then it sets an action which is rotating that spaceship and it runs the action forever and then it finally adds it. So let's see what this actually does. Notice we haven't changed any of the code here. This is just the standard app that you get when you create a sprite kit game. So there we go. There's our hello world. And if I then tap, we get a lovely rotating spaceship. And you can create as many of those on your screen as you like. Go crazy. Great. So that's all working fine. All I'm going to do now is get rid of the bits that we're not going to want. So we don't want our hello world now that we know that it's working and we'll leave the touches began function for now but we don't want spaceships to appear all over our app. So now we've got a fresh sprite kit app which won't do anything but is ready for our code. In the next video we'll start adding some images and start creating our flappy bird game.